really quick. Does anyone remember this video? That we might be at the beginning of the first ever man-made mass extinction brought on by our own hunting of certain species and by climate change. Good job, past me. So if you don't remember that video, it's fine. But what's important is that about a month ago, a joint study came out between Princeton, Stanford, and the University of California, Berkeley, that said that we are in the middle of the sixth mass extinction. So this week on Directive 350, we're going to be talking about that. One thing I'd like to stress is that the scientists who ran the study used extremely conservative numbers. For any scientist to say that a mass extinction is happening now, that people are causing it, and it's partially because of how we have affected our climate is a very big deal in the scientific community. In fact, the numbers that they use in this study are significantly smaller than many used in studies that have come before. This is why we are all so sure of what's happening right now. Alright, now that we have that out of the way, let's define a mass extinction. So broadly, we usually refer to them as things that wipe out a large portion of the Earth's population over many parts of the world and over many different species. Each one of these mass extinctions, or the five previous ones, have all had names, and it is no different with the sixth one. This has been dubbed the Holocene mass extinction. We derive the term Holocene from the Holocene era which is which one geological epoch that begins around 11,000 years ago. And basically, it, it marks the beginning of humans settling down. Um, when human civilization can start to grow, when we stop being hermits and we start growing corn and agriculture and wheat, we learn to write and do math and become sophisticated. But how do we know what's going on can be considered a mass extinction? How do we know that things are dying off quickly enough that we could even call it that? Um, the answer kind of lies in the math of the issue, which I like. In the last hundred years, since around 1900, 69 mammal species have gone extinct, and about 400 vertebrate species have gone extinct. This is very bad. In fact, we have not seen this kind of rapid dying off since about 66 million years ago, when the dinosaurs died. So what the scientists who conducted the study have done is they've taken current extinction rates and compared them to background extinction rates, or just extinction as a consequence of evolution. And one thing that they have found, even using the most conservative numbers, is that the rate of just, just vertebrae extinction is 114 times higher than it would be without humans. So actually, I think it'd be beneficial if I drew you a chart so you can see how a background extinction compares to a mass extinction. So this graph will be depicting the five mass extinctions that have happened previously. I'm going to be drawing a diagonal line down the roughly the middle of this graph, and anything below that line constitutes background extinctions, extinctions that happen naturally, and anything above, of course, is a mass extinction. Now the reason why the sixth extinction is not included in this is because we are currently living it. So some of the causes of this latest mass extinction are our own hunting of species, some natural causes, and of course climate change. Again, what we've... no, you know what, wait, I'm gonna let my past self do this. We've done to the Earth in 200 years what the Earth does naturally over the course of 20 million or so. The amount of CO2 we've released has totally thrown it out of balance. I couldn't have said it better myself. But on a more serious note, one of the unfortunate parts of any mass extinction is that it's not discriminating doesn't care that we're a very intelligent species. The damage that we've inflicted and the course of events that we have set in motion will almost inevitably run its course. Whether or not it means the death of all humankind, I do not know. I cannot say definitively. I do not have that kind of foresight. However, I do know that climate change will not yield to us. Um, the best that we can do is mitigate its effects starting now and that will give us the best chance of saving a lot of the species on the Earth, or at least some, and hopefully ourselves. Um, for the ethos of the matter, I would like to end this video with a quote from the lead author who wrote the study where this information came from, and he says, if it is allowed to continue, life would take many millions of years to recover, and our species itself would likely disappear early on. So with that in mind, thank you for watching. Please, as always,
stay informed.